Hey there, Sharon Horn Elsom here, but you can call me Pajama Grandma. In case we haven't met, go ahead and put hashtag pajama in the comments below so no, it's the first time you're being exposed to the Pajama Grandma. Today, your next challenge to supersizing your business. I am one of these people that takes a lot of notes. I have lots and lots of notebooks. I make lists, I work on challenges, I think of problems and I brainstorm things to create the next thing I'm going to work with, with a project or with a coaching student, whatever it happens to be. And one of the lists that I was looking at today based on an interview I did for the Women's Summit yesterday is how do I solve problems for the people that I work with? And I thought, well, in order to solve problems and help them solve problems, let's make a list of common problems that the people I work with in my business have and then a story or an example of how I've addressed that in my life and then a uh, solution or a possible way for them to address it in your life, for you to address it in your life. So I have this list and I was thinking about this list today um, and I'll just run through a couple of them and then give you a couple of examples of why this is something that came up for me and how it can impact you and help you to supersize your business. So some of the things on the list are, handy dandy magnifying glass, overwhelm, too many things on your to-do list. And this is, again, keep in mind the brainstorm list for my ideal customer. I'm going to recommend, if you haven't done this, make a list like this for your customers so that you understand the people that you want to serve better. So afraid of being left alone, I have to do it all myself, not enough support or team members, scared to fail, everybody's watching, nobody's watching, what if I blank, um, confidence, knowing what to do, um, the universe and the environment and the economy and the business and my team supports me. Um, and then the whole topic of fear and all the different fears that we have, as human beings have will rear their ugly heads as we're building our businesses. And what we fear when we start our business and then once we take that leap of faith and start our business and get into it, the fear of starting goes away, but other fears will pop up. Fear of failure, fear of success. A lot of people have a fear of death, fear of public speaking, fear of calling, fear of the phone, fear of snakes, fear of heights, whatever it is for you, that's going to pop up and be in your face and challenging you to deal with it. Um, the discussion we were having yesterday was really interesting in that um, <clears throat> the, she was talking, the woman I was talking to is from Spain. She lives in Spain, but was um, raised in East Germany. And she was talking about the challenge that she found when she went to Spain, she left corporate America to start a sewing business in Spain. And what she found was that the customers in Spain were very, very demanding and very forthright with what they expected and would ask for the world. And she found herself as a people pleaser bending over backwards to give them whatever they asked for, no matter what. She was afraid to say no to them. She was afraid they would tell each other because her business was predominantly word of mouth and that then she would be out of business. And she got to the point in her business where she wanted to quit. She, wa she was overwhelmed, overworked. She wasn't making the money and supporting herself because of all the demands and crazy things that people were asking her for and she wasn't saying no. Instead of saying, these are my people, this is how I can serve them, this is what I will do, she was just doing whatever they asked. And it was often unreasonable. <laughs> and that led us to a discussion. I realized that one of my biggest challenges over my entire career has been not asking for help. Not asking for help. And especially since I went out on my own. Um, when I was in corporate America, it was easy to ask for help because I had this ready-made team of experts and, and I had resources, virtually unlimited resources at my fingertips, both financial and intellectual resources and technological resources in my corporate role. When I, I went out on my own, I didn't have access to those same resources anymore. And I got into this trap of thinking that I had to figure everything out for myself and that I shouldn't ask. I should be able to just figure it all out myself. I don't know where that belief came from, but you'll notice a lot of these, almost all of these problems or situations that we come up with are actually belief related things. And there are beliefs, they're unique to us. And we don't necessarily realize that those beliefs are limiting us and preventing us from taking the next step to grow and supersize our business, but, but they always are. And we will be challenged with 
identifying what those are until we take a step back and we just be open to look at what's going on around us. I realized this last year in my coaching business that all of a sudden I was attracting coaching students that needed to all narrow their focus. They needed to narrow who they wanted to serve, what business they wanted to be in. I mean, they would come to me and they were like a lot like me. They had five or six different big projects, not little projects, big projects in five or six different directions. And we needed to say, okay, pick one and then let's get that one done and then we'll add the next. And I realized that I was attracting all of those people because that was the exact same thing I was doing. I had five or six different projects going on, big projects, all taking me in different directions, working with different types of people, doing different things and diffusing my energy and so and my focus and, and the results I was getting in all those areas were diluted because if I would have just picked one, which I've now done, I it, it would get me the results I wanted and it would give me impact a lot faster. It would create what I wanted to create much faster than being diffused. Now, what was interesting, as soon as I helped those coaching students and I realized that I needed to do it myself as soon as I focused and got clear myself everything changed and since then I have not attracted a single coaching student that that is their primary issue so if we're open the world will show us what it is that we need to see about ourselves that's holding us back and that was holding me back from getting the results that I want so look around yourself today look around your business and notice are you doing are you doing one of these things to limit the growth and the speed of growth of your organization are you getting the results that you want right now and if not there's something blocking that and resisting that and it's probably something within you me that I've had I've done so many of these things to block my own growth my own business and my own success in different businesses you know not being willing to delegate thinking I had to do everything myself working way too much you know I, I literally worked myself to death once and I'm just lucky that I'm here to talk to you about it and that I'm here to share what I learned in these things with other people so that they don't have to go through that same experience. So ask yourself today, what is my number one thing that the world is showing me that I need to figure out and let go of so that my business can go to the next level? What is the number one thing or characteristic or trait or fear that I have that could be, and maybe it isn't holding you back, but could be impacting the results that you could and should be getting. That's it. Go out, make it a fantastic day, and I will, of course, be with you tomorrow. Bye. Supersize your business. You got this.